Hey, I'm back. So we've got a follow-up video to the last video I did on Bell 5 gigabit internet. Um, so I got two products here. So the first is the standard Bell Home Hub 4000 provided by Bell with my fiber to the home uh, internet connection. So you see you've got ports on the back. So uh, this is the standard modem slash router that you would get from Bell when you get fiber to the home, which is what I have here. So we're gonna put that down for a second. The second thing I got here, which I have previously unboxed when I purchased it back in May of 2021, is the ASUS RT-AX89X. Uh, on the back we got, what do we got here? Eight gigabit ports, um, three more network ports. One is for WAN, uh, one is for 10 gig LAN, the other is SFP 10 gig LAN and you can use any of these three ports for your internet connection. On this side, we got two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, and those are good for network attached storage. And then you got your standard power button, your barrel connector for power, a couple lights on this side, a couple switches, good stuff. Oh, and by the way, my name is Sean. Welcome to Tech Mixer. Today, we're going to take my Bell Fiber to the Home 1.5 gigabit internet connection, and we're gonna attempt to go beyond gigabit on a single computer using the ASUS AX89X while vastly improving the Wi-Fi performance versus using the Home Hub 4000's built-in Wi-Fi. Spoiler alert, it works. And considering it's a prosumer slash consumer router, I'd say it works pretty well. Okay, so this has been covered in a few places, but we're just gonna go over it fairly quickly here. Why you typically don't wanna use your ISP provided router slash modem to route your traffic. Number one, Wi-Fi speeds on these things is usually abysmal. This one's not terrible, but it definitely leaves some room to be desired. So something you gotta consider is that on ISP provided equipment, um, like your modem router combo, they tend to lock out certain features or omit them entirely. And they do this because it's mainly for diagnosing reasons, but we're gonna dive into that a little more later on in the video. Also consider that the main processor inside of the ISP's equipment is usually not the highest end, and they do that for cost-cutting reasons, which is understandable, I mean, they are a business. And while cutting costs might be great and everything, the problem is you pay for it in lack of performance. And remember, at the end of the day, that equipment that came from your ISP is just a very specific purpose computer. What's a computer? And just like computers, if they heat up, they tend to slow down. I mean, you ever taken your cell phone out into the hot sun and tried to use it for an extended period of time, you'll notice the screen dims and the phone slows down. These modem router devices from the ISP, they're not the exception to the rule. They suffer the same thing. And you're definitely going to notice when it happens, when either your connection slows down a lot or even worse just disconnect entirely okay so for the setup we want the isp or in this case bell we want bell's equipment to not be a modem and a router we just want it to be a modem we're gonna leave the asus 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 i'm clearly gonna mess this up a lot we're gonna let the asus router handle all of the routing with its much better processor and much better is an understatement. This thing has a quad core 2.2 gigahertz processor and a gig of RAM, and even has a cooling fan on the processor. So that will make sure it maintains optimal performance and staying at a reasonable temperature to maintain that optimal performance. And with that big performance comes this, look at, look at this box, it's chonktacular. What do I have here? I got an older Logitech wired mouse and let's look at that for scale. That is ridiculous. This box is just a waste. It's such a waste, but I understand. I mean, they want to keep things secure, but yeah, that's bigger than some high-end motherboard boxes. That's actually pretty crazy. You'll notice from going from an ISP provided router to something like the ASUS AX89X that there's a ton of customization you can do on this router. And unlike the internet provider's equipment, these settings will actually stick. So an issue with ISP equipment is you may log into it and you'll see options like port forwarding or DMZ or other things that you wanna actually tweak and mess with. In order to apply those settings, you have to reboot it. But upon rebooting, what ends up happening is the settings don't stick. So why are these features even there if you can't adjust them? Well, big telecom, they'll buy like mass amounts of these products and then they'll just basically install a firmware 
modified firmware on them. And they'll have things like their logo and like whatever branding they need to put in the UI. And then they can remove any features that they don't want their end users messing with. And they can add stuff and make things custom for what they want for their company. And to be honest, it can be for good reasons. So you get something like the Home Hub 4000 or the Hytron from Rogers and you install it and then you log into it and you change a bunch of settings. Now here's the problem. Let's say you're in there and you're messing with settings, but then you manage to break your internet connection and you have no idea what you did and you start asking yourself if you got banned off the network and all that stuff. So you call, you get a technician over, the technician comes to your house and now that all the features are open, they have to go through each and every one of them because you don't wanna reset your router to factory default if you had a bunch of stuff in there. So they usually lock off a lot of settings so that way they can lower it down really quick and handle as many tech support calls as they possibly can. So not having to fish through all of your custom settings and seeing what you did to break the internet should get you back online faster and make people happy. Well, in theory anyway. If you play games online and you wanna do something like forward some ports so you can play a game that needs specific ports forwarded, the problem with an ISP provided router slash modem is yeah, you can put those settings in and then reboot it and then hope that you can get online. You're basically rolling the dice to use your internet connection optimally for your use case. Kind of ridiculous. And let's not forget that there is a very high likelihood that you are not the only person in your residence. And the last thing that you want to see happen is somebody else is using the internet somewhere else in the house and then it kicks you offline. It's like the 21st version of having dial-up internet and somebody picking up the phone. Look, this is why I'm extremely happy with the feature set that is offered by this Asus AX89X. Okay, so last but not least, uh, where's my Bell Home Hub? Okay, so we got the Bell Home Hub with no external facing antennas, and then obviously the <laughs> Asus AX89X we will definitely be making some jokes about the antenna layout later. You obviously, and I know this from my own testing, which we're gonna show later in the video, that you're gonna get better performance out of this thing. Um, you can even adjust the power limits, like in terms of how much power these antennas are pushing out. Now, in saying that, it's not as easy as cranking it to like a thousand, and you're not gonna do that because that actually hurts your signal. From my testing, I found that default, at least in my use case, default was way more than enough. Your mileage will probably vary depending on your residence. So speaking of the Home Hub 4000, yes, you can disable Wi-Fi on it. This is a question that comes up a lot, but you can't disable all of the Wi-Fi. You can get rid of the 2.4 gigahertz and the five gigahertz bands that your phone would typically connect to. However, Bell offers their 5 TV, I believe it's the wireless 5 TV, and that is controlled through an SSID that's invisible to the end user. You can access it, and it's always on. For those who wanna forego using Bell's equipment entirely, the only option that I'm aware of, and if there's another one, sound off in the comments, you can pick up the Bell Home Hub 3000. Now that has the SFP module removable with the um, fiber cable attached to it. So you would remove that, and then you would take that SFP module and plug it into an enterprise grade switch. Now the enterprise grade switch has to be able to lock to 2.5 gigabit. You can't use one that's 10 gigabit. A lot of people have asked me, and I'll just say it now in the video, this SFP port, this SFP plus port on the ASUS AX89X will not lock to 2.5 gigabit. So using the SFP module from the Home Hub 3000 straight into this is not an option. If you want more information on how to do that setup, if you're so inclined, there's a massive thread on DSL reports covering this. I'll throw a link in the description. And the people on that forum are a lot smarter than I am. I don't claim to be a network technician for simplicity and also because I probably can't get a Home Hub 3000. And even if I could, the ASUS AX89X will not lock to 2.5 gigabits, so it's not even an option. We're just gonna go the 10 gig port out of the bottom as I try to covertly cover my serial number. We're gonna go 10 gig out into the ASUS AX89X's 10 gig port, one of the two of them, and then the other 10 gig port's gonna go to my main machine, which has 10 gigabit ethernet on it. 
So what do we need to get started? Obviously you'll need both the Home Hub 4000 and ASUS router. You'll need at least two ethernet cables. I'd recommend using a minimum of CAT6 cables. You'll also want to pick up a WeTech 10G base T RJ45 to SFP plus transceiver. You can get these off Amazon. The link is in the description below. You will also need your login credentials, which you can either get from your Bell technician or from phone and customer service. Your username will start with the letter B, if that helps any. So, let's do the thing. All right, so here's my desktop and we are going to open Firefox because I refuse to open my default browser and reveal personal information. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to router.asus.com and we will be greeted by the wizard. So we'll go to advanced settings. Now you have the option to use this as an AI mesh node. A lot of the newer ASUS routers allow you to use AI mesh and you can basically set up these routers around the house and get better coverage. I've never personally had good luck with mesh networking. Um, I haven't tried the ASUS flavor of it. I've seen online, a few people have said it's really good. I do my network a little bit differently, so we're not gonna do the AI mesh. So we're gonna choose our operation mode and we're gonna choose the default, which is the wireless router mode. So now the WAN connection type. Right now, we actually have the Home Hub 4000 plugged into the 10G ethernet port. So we're gonna go ahead and click that. Now, please select the internet connection type from the options below. If you do not know the internet connection type, contact your ISP. Well, to do what we're doing, we're gonna use a method called PPPoE, right? So we're gonna click on PPPoE, and now we need our credentials from our provider. So we'll just move that there for a second. And right here, I've got my handy Bell Credentials text file, which I'm obviously gonna blur. Here we go. Bell credentials, so we will pop that in and we will pop in our password. We'll hit next. Okay, so we're gonna make it tech mixer and you know what? We'll just use a simple password, which I'm gonna change later, I promise. And it even says that it's danger. <laughs> yeah, don't use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this checkbox, this is an interesting one. To separate 2.4 and five gigahertz, I always recommend that you separate them. I find that if you leave your router, any computer to decide what network to connect to, there is a very high likelihood that your device is just gonna be offline. So you're gonna be on your phone scrolling Instagram and then it's just not gonna work because it's trying to switch networks and it's a whole mess. Just separate them and just choose the one you wanna to connect to and be done with it. So we're gonna apply that. We suggest you try a mix of letters, numbers, and symbols. Do you want to continue? Yes, I want to continue. Oh, this is aggressive. Okay, don't allow it to prompt me again. Okay. Do you wanna use Wi-Fi 6? Yes, I do. Now, some devices don't work well with Wi-Fi 6. You can always disable this. You can disable it here or after the fact, really up to you. So. We know that my devices work, so we're gonna click next. And the login name, we will call it Tech Mixer Guy. And the password, we're gonna go danger again. Please choose a more complex network password to improve your router security. Fine. Fine, I'll choose a not so strong password, but one that gets me into the router. So now it's gonna do its thing. Your internet connection setting is finished. You've changed SSID or security settings. This will result in wireless clients disconnecting. Please adjust client setting for connecting again. And you can see my super secure dangerous password. Once the new SSID is connected, go back to router.asus.com for more advanced settings. So after the router reboots itself, you are greeted with this screen. Now, what I would highly recommend is that you reboot your Home Hub 4000 at this point. We are gonna go into it and do some changes, but for now, let's log into the router. So we called it Tech Mixer Guy, and I used a somewhat secure password. Right, so you're gonna notice that the network cable is currently unplugged and my super secure keys are right here. That's amazing. The reason I rebooted the Home Hub 4000, I've noticed in my experience that when messing with that router, if you change settings, it doesn't like change. <laughs> so I typically, when I do anything major, change wise, I end up rebooting it. Just keeps things clean. And there's my IP address, which I'm gonna blur. So we've obviously got my IP address here, and then we have my super secure key right there. Wonderful. And we have our two SSIDs. What we're gonna do is we are actually going to log into the Bell network. 
So this Bell 761 that I'm connected to, that is not the ASUS router. That is the Home Hub 4000. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to 192.168.2.1, which will bring up our landing page for the Home Hub. Okay, cool. Okay, so we're logged into the Home Hub 4000. Let's just do a quick speed test. So this is a test that takes place on the modem. This doesn't necessarily reflect what you're gonna get to your device. This is just the raw data coming in from Bell. So if we start the test, it is doing its thing. So keep something in mind that the package that I'm on is the highest tier package, the 1.5 gigabit down and 940 megabit up. So this test should be indicative of the raw performance without any routers or anything. This is just coming straight to the modem. This isn't indicative of what you're gonna get on your machine necessarily. All right, so here are our results. We're getting 1.1 gigabit up with a two millisecond latency and we're getting 1.63 gigabit down. So that is working and that is awesome. We go in to manage my Wi-Fi. I'm gonna to go to advanced settings and I'm going to go ahead and disable both Wi-Fi channels. So the reason I'm doing this is pretty simple. I just don't want the Wi-Fi in the modem to conflict with my router. And while yes, I did go ahead and disable the Wi-Fi on the Home Hub 4000, there is a hidden Wi-Fi channel that you cannot disable and Bell uses that for their wireless TV services. They don't allow you to turn that off. So unfortunately, that's something you just gotta live with. Whatever, it's not the end of the world. All right, so the Bell Home Hub is now disconnected from Wi-Fi that we can access. So now we're gonna go ahead and connect to our router. So we're gonna go to other networks. We're gonna choose Tech Mixer, 5G. Let's show our password. Yeah, so we'll click join. And soon enough, we have Wi-Fi, excellent. So we'll reopen Firefox and we're gonna go to router.asus.com. It's gonna ask me to sign in which I will now. All right, so we're back signed in and we have a public IP address, which is denoted by the 184 at the beginning and I'm not gonna show the rest. All right, so let's uh, go over to Adaptive QoS for a moment. All right, so we have this little internet speed tool under the Adaptive QoS. So if we hit go, let's see what kind of speed we pull. Look at that, look at that. That's going straight to the router. So the router is getting more than the advertised speed from Bell, that is awesome. Very nice speed test and our level is ultra. Very cool, okay. But now let's do something a little bit different. Before we continue here, let's take that 10 gig SFP transceiver and plug a 10 gig cable from that into this Mac and see how it performs via speed test. Okay, so we've got our 10 gig cable plugged in and so that we can have an accurate speed test, we're actually gonna disable Wi-Fi. And we're gonna load speed test. And ready, three, two, one, go. So we've got the 10 gig port going and okay, that's not bad. And look at that, we are getting well over the gigabit limit on the computer directly connected to the AX89X. Okay, so this speed test, while it was really clean, was unexpected and I'm gonna show you why. There's one thing on the ASUS you have to change if you're gonna go this route of using the Bell Home Hub 4000 and basically bypassing its routing features and using your own router. Okay, so let's go to router.asus.com and we'll go here, let's sign in again. So we saw some good speed tests. However, let's go over to our status. So we're gonna actually move this window over here and we're gonna pull our speed test over here. You'll notice that there's four CPU cores in this router. And what's really interesting is if I hit go right here, look at how this goes crazy. So we are basically chewing through CPU usage. And the problem is if I were to stop the speed test, and then run another one right away, you're gonna notice that my speeds are not necessarily as high as they could be. And look at this, we're maxing out the first two cores. So the reason for this is a default setting that ASUS has implemented that I'm not sure how it behaves with other internet service providers, but we're gonna fix this now. By the way, I did this so that you guys don't have to because this took forever to figure out. I was losing my damn mind. Moving on. 
we are going to click on LAN. So if you click on LAN, you'll have these tabs at the top and we have this one called switch control. And you'll notice right here, we have NAT acceleration. So if I click on it, it says, when NAT acceleration enabled, switch can handle the network packets by itself and bypass the CPU. It can increase NAT or network address translation throughput, but some features may not work precisely, such as scheduling traditional QoS and bandwidth limiter on guest network, etc. If you set NAT acceleration as auto, it will be disabled automatically once those features are enabled. Yeah, we're just gonna disable it. We're not even gonna bother with it. So we're gonna apply it and the router is going to reboot itself. Okay, so while this reboots, I wanna bring up something. Remember the last video which had the thumbnail, almost perfect internet? I made a mistake. I was wrong. You're a phony! Hey everybody! This guy is a great big phony! I really am. So when I got Bell Fibe 1.5 gigabit, I had Rogers at the same time for about a week overlap. And when I recorded my gameplay footage of Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered, I was running the Xbox. It was the same Xbox with the same installation. But what were the odds that my installation of Call of Duty on my external solid state drive would get corrupted between the time that I disconnected Rogers and connected Bell. Well, apparently it was very high because all I did was I deleted the install and I reinstalled the game and all the loading problems that I was having seemingly went away. Now that's not to say that Bell is okay just being stuck on IPv4. I still don't agree with it. I'm still gonna die on that hill. They have to upgrade to IPv6. That being said though, I haven't had a single disconnect. The lag has been non-existent for the most part and it's almost perfecter internet. Sure. Okay, so we're rebooted and we've got our status here. And you'll also notice I put this little config file here. Those were my settings before I went and reset my router to shoot this video. And what I love on this router is you can just back up your settings and restore them and get all the fun stuff back, all of your DHCP reservations, port forwarding, etc. Fantastic stuff. But anyway, so we have our speed test here and we're gonna hit go and let's look at these cores and see what happens. Okay, we're getting some good performance. Eh, the first core is maxing out, but it's not doing that double core throttling thing it was doing. So if we stop it, hit it again, let's see. One millisecond ping and look at that. We're getting some good speeds. Again, we're not maxing out the cores, but it's getting up there. That's pretty awesome. So again, we're getting over gigabit directly connected to the router. When using gigabit devices like an Apple TV 4K directly connected to the AX89X, before the NAT acceleration fix, we were getting speeds below gigabit. Upon fixing it, you can clearly see that it's much more stable and faster now. You will notice, and you've probably heard this on other tech videos, that you're never gonna get your full 1.5 gigabit down unless you're doing things like torrenting, legally, of course. But it's nice to have the overhead. You can do port forwarding right here and you can click go. Now, what's really cool is they provide you a list of games and game profiles. So you'll notice like you've got like Black Ops and you've got CSGO, Diablo 3. So if you scroll down, you've got game profiles. You can add a profile and here's your game list and we'll search for a game. So I prefer Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered which is Infinite Warfare, Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare Remastered for Xbox One. And if you go on your Xbox, you can get your IP address, your internal IP address, and you can punch it in here. You could also do DHCP reservations like most routers. The feature set is extremely robust and you can actually do this port forwarding directly with the app, which is actually pretty awesome. So that is pretty cool. Also, I really like the way that you can share your internet connections. So let's say I have a couple of friends over and I want to give them Wi-Fi access. Well, I don't have to fumble with trying to find a password that I tape to the fridge or something. I can pull the phone out. I can tell it to share my connection. It'll then throw up a QR code. All the person has to do is pull out their camera on their Android or iOS device and scan the QR code and it will connect immediately. And what I really like is you can even set parameters for like, how long they can be on the network. So if you know that your friends are staying over for the weekend, you can give them 48 hours. If you know they're only gonna be over for like a couple of hours, you can give them a couple of hours. The sky's the limit. And that I think is very cool and very robust and a very underrated feature of a lot of routers is the ability to share 
that easily. So big thumbs up to Asus for that. So the question now is, does the size of the box warrant the performance? It's wasteful, but I mean, is it a good router? Absolutely. So you got a ton of ports. You can do beyond gigabit speed with it if your internet connection provides. It's quite the beast of a router. How's the Wi-Fi performance? Well, here's a speed test of my iPhone 13 Pro Max over Wi-Fi 6 using the Home Hub 4000. And same device, but this time using the Asus AX89X. Coverage on this thing is ridiculous. Stability for your internet connection is fantastic. Another cool thing is the AI mesh. I mean, again, I haven't tried it, but I've read and heard from quite a few people that the Asus AI mesh setup is amazing. So that's always a plus. It's a really good router to use as probably your main router and then using maybe a lower cost router from Asus to do your AI mesh throughout your property. So I mean, that's an option as well. It also has a cooling fan where you can adjust the speed of the cooling fan. That's for the processor inside of it. The cooling fan is there to make sure that the processor is running at its optimal capacity at most, if not all times, which you cannot say the same for routers slash modems provided by your internet service provider. Okay, so what are the cons? So there's a few cons that we gotta talk about. The first is that NAT acceleration being enabled by default. And I also don't understand that narrative in the description because it says that it takes the load off the CPU to accelerate network address translation, but it yielded lower speed test results. Not entirely sure what that's all about. Also, and know this, that SFP port can get very hot. Now, I've been running this router for just under a year. It's been pretty good, it's been fine. I haven't had any connection dropouts. I also don't fiddle with the SFP port when I don't have to, but it's something to keep in mind. The SFP port does get a little hot. The last con I'm gonna talk about is kind of the obvious one. It's pretty expensive. Money, please. No, like really expensive. <sighs> Money, please. Money, please. No, especially being that it's a consumer solution, it's not enterprise gear that you would find in like a server rack. If you're gonna be spending upwards of around 500 Canadian, which is around what I paid at the time that I purchased it, if you're willing to do something a little more long-term, you might be better exploring solutions by say Ubiquity. Um, they make some fantastic products. If you're willing to go down that wormhole, there is a lot of customization that these consumer routers just don't have and most people have no need for, but for simplicity's sake and for my setup, I'm using this router for now, that could change. But for now, I'm very happy with it. It's been rock solid. And then there's the elephant in the room, the partner approval factor. Let's just say it, it's a smart spider. Spider router, spider router. Oh my gosh, it's a spider router. It's so fast, don't be a doubter. Not much rhymes with router. Look out, here comes the spider router. When this pandemic's over, I really gotta get outside. Check, check, mixer, 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 mixer.